I want to talk about the moment when I suddenly, <laughs> out of nowhere, struck with what I could only call at the time was the presence of God. In my case, God really did show up at my lowest point. I have good news though, that I'm a stroke survivor, but having the misfortune of having a stroke at 28, after saying that my wife and 10 year old daughter at the time was brilliant, they just looked after my every need. But my life was turned upside down and my stroke really did affect me. At the time I could not use either arms, uh, my legs had gone, balance has gone, my hand coordination is gone, my brain just wasn't working properly, my speech had completely gone. Like I said, God really does touch us when we're down. Right, let's talk about this amazing experience. It's, uh, it just wows me every day, to this day. I just can't stop thinking about it. So, it was the morning of the 12th of July, August the 10th, August 2010, sorry. About two days after my stroke, my wife was spoon feeding me porridge. And I'd just finished. My wife just went out of the room to make me a cup of coffee. Now, this is a moment where everything just went like that. And I was in the presence of God. All I could see was purple, great blinding light to one side. I was just amazed. It, was, it gobsmacked me. I would, couldn't talk anyway, but <laughs> yeah, this really did amaze me. But when I was struck with this, it may have been a few seconds, but I felt like I had the knowledge of all. I felt like I had the knowledge of everything on earth. Um, and the love and the joy was just overpowering. I was just dwarfed. It's truly amazing. But I knew this presence was something special. It wasn't just nothing normal. I found myself ha having to ask, God, are you real? And to my amazement, God answered, Yes, I am. Me. To this day, it really does it just hit me right here. Yeah. yeah, like I said, it is just like a flash, a few seconds, but it changed my life completely. If we like go to the first scripture, Ezekiel. Oh. <laughs> It's on there. It's Ezekiel 36, 26 to 27. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. I mean, wow. The scripture really does sum up what happened to me. It just new life. New life. Amen. At this time, at the time ten years ago, I wasn't a believer. I probably am in a man, like, is God real really? Yeah, probably. But I never done nothing about it. Work was my most important thing. I was just a workaholic. But, but all I wanted to do after this moment was get hold of a Bible. Now, at the time, how could I get this through to my wife? As I, but I did manage. As I, with my hands, I managed to put a cross together with my fingers. And they opened a book, opened a book, meaning, get me a Bible now. But my wife, she understood, and um, we went and got me a Bible. So, all I wanted was more of God's Word. 
the truth. And I thought to myself, God is truly real, and so is Jesus Christ. Matthew 7. Is it there, is it? Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? Matthew 7, 7 to 8. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who, who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Well, my do- door was kicked open. <laughs> it's, uh, it's wide open for me. And I pushed through. It's, uh, like I say, I, I just pushed through this door. Anyway, my wife managed to get me a Bible. And as soon as I read, in the beginning, I was glued. All I wanted was more of God's Word. As I got through the book, more of Jesus Christ. I put the desire to be in God's presence ahead of everything, even my stroke rehabilitation. It was just ahead of everything, and it still is today. And I I feel truly blessed. Amen. My first for this book, it just truly amazes me. I mean, why me? Why me? I don't know. (laughs) Matthew 6. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Amen. (coughs) Yes. What a brilliant bit of scripture. It's lovely. Like I said, it's completely turned my life. From upside down, inside out. All I wanted from this day was to be as righteous as I could possibly can. Oh, as I possibly can be. I mean, it's all of our dreams, right? To be as righteous as we can. Yes, all I wanted to be as righteous as I possibly could could be reading God's Word, Jesus Christ's Word, and to live in the Holy Spirit, which I believe I truly experience and die first for more. Proverbs 2. Then you will understand what is right, what is just, and fare every good path, for wisdom will enter your heart, and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Mm. After this experience, my experience, my wow experience, I just love to study this book. I spend, I spent ten years, almost every evening, studying this book. I've been watching sermon after sermon on YouTube, archaeological, biblical discoveries of recent times. Every day it amazes me that something new is discovered that confirms the Bible. I mean, it's just brilliant. It doesn't confirm the New Testament, it's confirming the Old Testament. The little seals, they're found every day, and it just blows my mind. Joshua 1. Keep this book of law 
of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written on it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Amen. Ah. I'm truly a different person. I think my best friend dear Charlie is here today. He can confirm that I'm a completely different person to what I was. Um, for the better, I hope. <laughs> so, yeah. The wisdom and knowledge you can get from just reading a book of Psalms and a book of Proverbs. As soon as I came across these books, I just fell in love. I just love wisdom, love knowledge. I'm a, I'm a bit of a how and a why man. I need to know. And all the knowledge and wisdom, I could just soak this up forever. So, like I say, I just love gaining more wisdom and knowledge from this book. The Bible is the past, it is the present, and it will defy our futures. 2 Timothy 3 All scripture is God-breathed, and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Mm. All scripture is God's breath, God's word. It corrects us. We all need correcting, right? Mm. Yeah, yes. But keeping our eyes on, on the Lord Jesus Christ, that's what we should be doing, even in our weakest moments. I mean, at the time of my stroke, you see how weak I was. But I didn't feel sorry for myself. I'm not that kind of bloke, you know? It's, I was like, it's happened, what can I do? Nothing. <laughs> but keep my mind on God. But God had called me out to show himself. To me at my lowest point, just like God can do in all of your lives. We as believers are so blessed to have a faith, to have a belief, to keep our minds focused on God, Lord Jesus Christ, and live in the Holy Spirit continuously. That's my dream, living it continuously. This is not easy though. We all know at times our minds can slip from the focus of God. But all we can do is try our best to keep our minds focused on God, Jesus Christ, and to live in the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> One John two. But if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made, complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus Christ did. Hard, yeah. Hard to walk as Jesus did. I try and every day, try my hardest every day to be as righteous as I can be. It's not not easy. Not at all. This next scripture really wowed me. Oh no. It's over, yeah. 
<laughs> this makes me think the scripture Romans 6 1 to 4 what shall we say then shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase by no means I mean I, li- I personally like the King James's version it's, I think it says certainly not strong words yeah strong words we are, we are those who have died to sin how can we live in it any longer or don't you know that all of us who were baptised into Jesus into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father we may may too live a new life new life dead to sin alive in Christ Mm, Amen Yes Jesus just didn't die on the cross for our sins it's something that we've got to do as well it's not as easy as can you forgive me please forgive me again please forgive me again and again no if we have our minds set on Jesus Christ and God and try to live in the Holy Spirit this can stop us from sinning truly Romans 12 (coughs) Therefore I urge you brothers and sisters in, in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God this is your true and proper worship do not conform to the patterns of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is his good, pleasing and perfect will Amen Mm. Lovely scriptures, eh? He's a. But all we can do on our journey as believers is to try our utmost to walk as Jesus did, to obey God's word, to live as righteous as we possibly can. It's not easy being a Christian in today's world. All the deceptions, temptations available to everyone, anywhere, any time. They're just uncountable. But like I said, we have our minds focused on the example Jesus Christ has set. Amen? Amen. Romans 8. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give to your immortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Amen. Mm. Do we feel it? Do we feel it every day? His spirit? Mm. Our minds are a very powerful thing. It's the power of our minds. If we're not able to do this, what can we do? We've got to make our minds stronger. Make our minds stronger on Jesus Christ and God. Mm, amen. James 4, 7 to 8. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. 
come near to God, He will come near to you. Wow. After my experience, ten years, just my mind has been focused on Jesus and God. And I suppose you can all see the, the improvements from what I am um, describing as I was first struck by my, my stroke. I couldn't even talk. I was, and thinking, thinking about it, it really is a miracle for me to be up here today, to be speaking these words. And I feel so blessed. Why me? It's, really amazes me but I hope from this that we can all gain hope God gives us hope so let's put our hope in God Amen Amen, Amen.